we are going to continue on talking about strategies. But before I get into the actual uh, discussion of the day, two announcements first. Number one, certificates. <laughs> I announced yesterday that if you do not receive your certificate 24 hours later, that's when you email notmanrentoy at gmail.com. I will not have time to make your certificates. You will have to email I want my certificate at gmail.com. Okay? That's the email you will have to send a request to. I looked at the list today and all certificate all those who filled up the form yesterday until this morning already received theirs. There are four who will never receive their certificate because they wrote wrong email address. Like gmail.com. Ayan. <laughs> okay. <kaya, laughs> may dot in between the at and the gmail. So misspelled email. I mentioned to you yesterday if uh, you don't write the correct email address, you're not going to be able to receive it in your email address. Okay? So that's one. Uh, now, later, we're going to again flash the QR code where you can access the link to claim today's certificate. I have to already tell you, only the first 200 will receive it today because Gmail gives maximum of 400 emails a day being sent out. That's, not, mm, that's beyond me. It's Gmail that set the limit. So, oh, since yesterday, around 400, 500 filled up the form and were able to receive their certificates that are only... Uh, and then more were sent this morning. We've already sent out, I think, 200 this morning for the rest of the certificates that have not been sent, uh, that were not sent yesterday. So, I'm left with only 200 more emails to send from this account. And therefore, only the first 200 will receive the, uh, your certificate today. The rest, you will receive it tomorrow. Don't send an email <laughs> asking for the certificate or saying that you have not received it until mm -hmm. after tomorrow's session, okay? And then the following day, the rest of the um, um, other certificates should be sent out. Number two, we didn't get to send out uh, to send, uh, sorry, we didn't get to entertain questions yesterday. And so I have instructed our friends from PWU, if you have any question at any time, write them on a piece of paper. I think there are some papers that were uh, passed around and just hand over at any time of the seminar, the, uh, hand over the paper to our staff. Um, those in Zoom room, you can type in your question in the chat box at any time, and then I will be uh, given the questions. And if I think the questions are uh, worth answering, I need to stop at any point to answer them, then we'll do that. If uh, some of them can wait until the end of the presentation and we answer all the questions together, then we will also do that, okay? So, but you can pass on the question at any time. Okay, so first is thank you so much for those of you who gave the evaluation yesterday. Um, 506 responses. I think this was until five o'clock yes, uh, six o'clock yesterday afternoon. Many more uh, responses came in up to this morning, and 90 percent of you rated it excellent. Uh, Ten, 9.7 percent, very good. Pero ano, may kita kayong isang nandon, isang May isang naglagay ng fair, siguro hindi siya masayahing tao. I mean, <laughs> si, hindi siya natuwa sa, <laughs> hindi, ni-rate niya as fair. At least hindi siya poor. Pero, uh, pagkaganon, I'm hoping to hear the comment. Of course, we want to know. Uh, sige nga, how else can you, uh, how else would you like this seminar uh, so that it's, good at least or very good uh, or excellent as many of you rated it and thank you so much for the very kind words uh, there there was somebody said the best seminar i've attended in my whole life ha? talaga naman ano pag bigyan natin ng cellphone yan sino yung sining sumagot na yun? 
Bigyan ng jacket. Okay. I mean, I really appreciate very much the, um, the comments. And very encouraging. And I'm very happy that many of you found the strategies to be very helpful, very useful. And you're excited to test them, to try them out. I already have to tell you, if while I'm explaining the strategy, iniisip nyo na kagad, hindi to uubra. I can assure you, hindi uubra. Pero pag ang iniisip nyo, ay, kung, pwede kong subukan to. I will have to try this. Then, you stand a better, um, yeah, you stand a better chance of success. Okay? Let me see. Uh, Ayo gumana ang aking. Okay, anyway. So then, let's continue on because I have so many exciting um, strategies to share with you, especially those I personally learned along the way. Uh, by the way, somebody commented, uh, we need more materials. Teka muna, ang dami-dami ko ng materials binigay ka hapon, ang dami ng libro, kulang pa ba yun? Ay, baka... Baka wala, uh, siguro late siya dumating. <laughs> Kasi in-announce ko to at, start, uh, at the start of the seminar. So anyway, for those of you who weren't able to get the QR code where you can download so many books, then uh, go ahead and um, download. This is, by the way, a new set. Yesterday, I passed on to you before the Zoom link, oh, uh, before the Zoom room opened, I passed, uh, I passed on to you. So many materials. Now, this is another set of 10 books that can be very helpful for you. Okay? So, you're going to see books like... I, don't worry. I'm, to get, I'm, going to, I'm going to go back to that um, uh, QR code. One of the books here is Smart and Good High Schools, which contains hundreds of strategies used by smart and good high schools in the United States as put together by, doc, by Dr. Thomas Licona. And uh, positive parenting, um, their character strengths and virtues, a handbook and classification, creating a vision for your school, that 100 simple secrets of successful people. So um, go ahead and take a picture of the QR code. If you are not connected to the internet now, or if you're already in data, <laughs> connected to the internet, then go ahead and access the Google Drive and start downloading all the books you want from that list. I'll give more, hopefully, tomorrow. Okay, let's therefore proceed on to the um, first strategy for the day. We start with, okay, I'll start with one of the best teachers in the world. I mentioned already Rafe Esquith yesterday, that's the name. The author of the book, Teach Like Your Hair is on Fire. As I said, for three decades, more than three decades, he's been teaching grade five in a poor community in Los Angeles where most of the students end up failed, kicked out, or even jailed, except every single student who passes through his grade 5 class, most of whom end up in Harvard, Stanford, Yale, and are now very, very successful, successful professionals. What does he do? Well, um, I got to meet him in Washington, D.C., and I tried inviting him, Mr. Esquith, I hope I can bring you to Manila for some conference. Sabi niya, oh sure, yeah. Um, I charge $20,000 per presentation. That's 1 million pesos. So sabi ko, thank you very much. Have a nice day. I'll just buy your book and memorize it and give it as a seminar to teachers of PWU and the rest of the Philippines. So no need to pay 1 million. I'm going to share some of his top secrets, strategies on how he is able to form the character of his grade 5 students that they go on to be highly successful. Now, yesterday I discussed with you his principle on delayed gratification. That's Rafe Esquith. 
Now, one day, he sat down and asked the question, bakit minsan ang lakas ng impact ko sa student? Tagalog ha, talagang nag-iisip siya sa Tagalog. I'm just kidding. He's an American. How come sometimes I have a great impact with the students and sometimes not as much? He asked the question, when are we teachers able to make a great impact on the lives of our students? You know the answer? When do you think are we teachers able to make the great impact, a really great impact on the lives of our students? Answer, when we teach them life skills. When you teach students skills they will not need to pass a quiz or to pass a test, but skills they will need for the rest of their life. And so this is what he did. He decided to come up with a system in his classroom by which the students are going to learn life skills. Grade 5, and here's how it goes. Grade 5, he would welcome the students to his classroom on day 1, get them excited about the school year, and then he will tell them, class, in this room of Mr. Esquith, the room 56, that's the room he's been assigned to take uh, to use for the last more than three decades. Here in my class, you are going to pay for the chair you are sitting on. Monthly rental. Life skill. Ganun naman ang buhay, di ba? Wala namang libre bahay. <laughs> you need to pay. And if you don't get to pay your monthly rental for the seat you're sitting on, for the chair you're sitting on, then you will have to sit on the floor. Life skill. Di ba gano'n naman sa buhay? Pag wala kang bahay, abay, homeless. Uh, wala kang titirhan. Yan. But he will, he will tell them, don't worry. Here are jobs that you can apply for so that you have a salary. Grade 5, day 1. He is going to distribute to them job application forms. Real job application forms. Someday, these grade 5 kids will become professionals. They will apply for a job. They will fill up the form. And they will say, Ang dali nito. Nagawa ko na to nung grade 5. Life skill. So, class, here are the job openings that you can apply for. So that you have salary. So that you have money to pay for your monthly rental of the chair. Okay? Now, let me see. I have to explain. When we say money here, we mean virtual money or play money or monopoly money. But since Rafe Esquith has been doing this for decades, he even already has a printed currency in room 56. Here are the job openings you can apply for. You can apply as a banker. For every five students, one has to be the banker, keeping track of the earnings, the payments, the fines of the four other members in his group. Keeping uh, track of the interests of their money, bonus money that they earn, Ma uh, banker salary, $600 a month. Here's another job assignment. Oh, by the way, if you want to apply as a banker, you need to present two recommendation letters from previous teachers who will attest to your integrity that you will not steal. Grade 5, they're learning the importance of being recommended, of character, of other people trusting in their integrity. Here's another job opening, and it's the highest job it's the highest paying job of them all. Janitor. $650 a month salary. Day one. And the students are learning. It's not about the title. It's the service you give to other people that gives value to your job. That's why the room of Rafe Esquith is speak and span. It's very clean. Because there are janitors in every area paid, quote-unquote, paid to do the job of cleaning. 
Here's another job assign, uh, sorry, not job assignment, job that you can apply for so that you have a salary to pay for your monthly rental. Graders, now, let me explain why they need graders. The bell rings at 7.30 to start the day. But the students of Rafe are inside the classroom by 6 a.m. every day, excited to do math, English, spelling drills. They're not forced. They're excited to be there to do drills. Now, some of you may be thinking, Ay, grabe, dagdag trabaho, na cheche ka ng teachers. Hindi. There are people paid to collect those drills, check them, and keep track of the grades, the graders. Here's another job you can apply for, messenger. Because sometimes we need to send somebody to the office, we need somebody to get a video projector, we need somebody, messenger. Here's another job you can apply for, police officer, who will keep order and discipline in the four districts of the classroom. Kahit walang teacher sa loob ng classroom, no problem. They will behave because there are police officers being paid to do the job. Here's another job opening you can apply for, video monitor. Because Rafe has a collection of videos, DVDs, in the olden ways, in the olden style. Now we have, of course, in the files. But we have, he would have a collection of life-changing movies, videos, a collection of them inside this classroom. He believes in the power of videos. Diba? Minsan may napapanood kang sine, and the message is so powerful, you want to be better. <laughs> you want to be a better human being. He has a collection of those videos, and students can borrow, watch over the weekend, and when they return the video, they have to return it with answers to three questions that bring out the life lessons on those movies, on those videos. So we need somebody to be in charge of the videos. Video monitor. That's another job you can apply for. Here's another job you can apply for. Recycler. Another glamorous name for garbage collector. Ayan. In charge of trash can. Here's another job assign, uh, job that you can apply for, attendance monitor. But Rafe has to warn, Rafe Esquith has to warn them. By the way, this is the most boring job of them all because usually nobody is late and nobody wants to be absent. And you will know later why nobody is late. Well, I already answered that because they are excited to be there at 6 a.m. to do math, English, and spelling drills. And nobody wants to be absent. The problem of Rafe is yung studyante may lagnat na 38, 39, pumapasok pa rin, 40, ayaw mag-absent. Why? I'm going to tell you later why. Here's another job assignment. Clerks assisting the teacher, making sure that the teacher's table is orderly and the materials are complete and there. And that... Um, it's like serving as an assistant to the teacher. Here's another job you can apply for, librarian. Because Rafe would make his students write a book report every week. And so they would have books available for the students. And so somebody has to be in charge of the library. By the way, I didn't get to mention the class of Rafe Esquith, grade 5, by the end of the year, every single one of them is able to publish a book. I mean, just put together the book reports they wrote for the whole year that can constitute one book. But it's not only that. They really are able to go on to write a book by the end of grade 5. Life-changing, grade 5 for them becomes really a turning point in their life. And by the way, most of the students of Rafe Esquith in that school, Hobart's Elementary School, most of the students there are um, students with English as second language, Asians, non-English speaking uh, Latinos, Mexicans. So 
And yet, all of them are able to publish a book by the end of grade 5. Here's another job you can apply for. Okay, you can come up with other jobs you can uh, offer to the students. They will apply. They will have to fill up the form. And then, the teacher will tell them later what jobs they're able to get. And then they're going to receive salary for that job that they do. And they will have to do a good job, otherwise they can be fired. Now, here is how much it will cost for their seat rental. The closer to the teacher, the more expensive the chair. The front row, let's call it Bel Air. $1,000 a month ang rental niyan. Middle of the room, let's call it Beverly Hills, $750. Near the, the video library, let's call it Hollywood, $700. Near the water fountain, let's call it Santa Monica, $675. The cheapest, the back row, the skid row, $550. Now, diba? this is supposed to bring out life lessons. What is the life lesson we see here? Mas malaki ang renta kesa sa salary. Isn't that how life is? That's how life is. You have to find other ways of earning. <laughs> because it's just not enough to rely on your salary. So, by the way, if you want to apply that in the Philippines, the front row, you can call, ah, dito, saan ka nakaupo ngayon? Dito ko sa Shangri-La, ayan. Saan ka ngayon? Wala kong pere. Doon ako sa Liana Supermarket, sa likod. <laughs> Doon ako nakaupo sa likod. Now, here are, you need to earn extra. Here are ways by which you can earn extra money. The banker will add money to you if, number one, let's say you get perfect spelling test scores. The banker will add $50 to your account. Do that three times uh, in a row or after three in a row, the amount, the amount becomes $100. 90% on any other test, the banker will put in your account $50. But if you get 100% one, if you get 100 on any other test, the banker will put $100 on your account. 200 sorry. No wonder they will study and study hard because they need the money. They need to earn extra income. After all, sabi ni Mr. Esquith, if you are able to pay the banker three times the amount of your monthly rental, you own the chair. No need to pay every month. And in life, it's better to own than to rent. Some of them become so rich, so rich, they don't just buy their chair, they pay three times the rental to the banker, they buy the chair of their classmate. So that every month, now you pay monthly rental to me. <laughs> grade 5, grade 5, and they learn entrepreneurship. I mean, they start thinking about having to not just survive, but to thrive, to thrive. Completing a weekend video assignment. You remember the life-changing movies, the powerful movies with life lessons? Watch one of those, and the banker is going to give you $50. So some of them will not just borrow one video, life-changing video. They will borrow two or three so that when they come back on Monday, give the answers to the nine questions, and the banker will give them $150 in their account. Perfect attendance, no wonder nobody wants to be absent. Because if they get perfect attendance, the banker will give them $100 in their account. Coming to school early for extra math or extra spelling or extra English drills, $100 every time you come. They are excited to be there, not forced. Now, Coming, uh, staying after school for Shakespeare. The bell rings at 3.30 for dismissal. But you can stay up to 6 p.m. to practice for a Shakespeare play. And all of them would like to be part of the Shakespeare play. And by the end of the year, they are able... You remember yesterday, one of the strategies I shared with you is from Rafe. Play or theater. 
as a way of developing delayed gratification. But it's not just about being able to stage a production. It's especially about developing delayed gratification, working as a team, working with a group, collaboration, collaborative effort. And that play, the Shakespeare play they produce at the end of the year, they get invited all around the United States to perform. They were even invited by the uh, Supreme Court in the U.S. to perform before all the judges, the uh, lawyers. They were invited by Congress to perform their Shakespeare play before the uh, legislators. And Queen Elizabeth, may she rest in peace, gave him a recognition for his Hobart's Shakespearean plays. That's Rafe Esquith's class. So all of them wants to all of them want to stay up to 6:30, 6 o'clock, rehearsing for a play. Now, what else? Joining the school orchestra, $100. Joining the school chorus, $100. Playing guitar with a teacher. Rafe Esquith, this is a self-contained classroom. He's the teacher of all the subjects from first period to dismissal. It's a self-contained classroom. And during recess and lunch, he would make himself available for those who want to learn how to play the guitar or play the keyboard. And you will be rewarded by the banker every time you join attending a uh, recess or lunch uh, class on playing the guitar in key. By the end of grade five, all of the students there know how to play the guitar or the keyboard or both. I mean, that's real life-changing um, time for them. And the banker will give $100 every time you attend. But the highest award also is given to uprightness, character. If another teacher compliments you for your goodness, character, kindness, and good work, whatever it is, some of them, as I said, become so rich, so rich, they buy their chair. Some buy the chairs of their classmates and they start earning from the monthly rentals. But there's also fine, being late, tardy, $50 fine, missing homework, $50 fine, rudeness, like you're not listening when somebody's reciting. That's $50 fine. Or the police sometimes uh, organize a surprise raid. They will check your drawers. If it is messy, disorderly, $100 fine. But the biggest fine is reserved for dishonesty. You're caught cheating, plagiarizing, submitting something that was not done by you, but done by chat GPT. That's dishonesty. And how I wish... Kids really learn honesty, uprightness, as early as grade five. And that is what Rafe does with this system. And it works. It works. Now, yesterday, we talked about six levels of moral development. You remember? That's from Rafe Esquith. Application of Kohlberg's six levels of moral development inside the classroom. And remember that he always wanted, attempted to make his students reach level six thinking. Those two have to go hand in hand. The economic system of Rafe and the sixth level thinking that we want to put in place. Because here's something that you need to uh, take note of. Some schools hear about this economic system and they put it in place without the six levels of moral development. And the students just become greedy. They start just working to get more and more money. It defeated a purpose because it did not go with, I have a personal code of behavior and I follow it. I live by principles. I have core values. Those or that sixth level thinking has to go hand in hand with this. Okay? That's the economic system of Rafe. And he has been doing this for years and years. He has been using the same classroom for the last 28, 30 years or so. That's why 
the title of his book is uh, Teach Like Your Hair is on Fire, The Methods and Madness of Room 56. And there are so many other more strategies contained in that book, Methods and Madness. But bottom line of that is really like what we talked about yesterday, you start creating a class culture, a class mindset, a way of thinking for the students that they start thinking that way. I'm expected to be my best, not because I'm after a reward or avoiding a punishment or just trying to please somebody or just following rules, but because I have a personal code of behavior and I live by it, I live by principles. Before I go to my own personal discoveries as a teacher, my own strategies, I'm going to welcome you to my classroom in Southridge um, and the strategies I discovered along the way. Let's not give up on any of our students. Now, kasi kahapon, na-realize ko parang ang, wala tayong kwento, no? And sige, magkikwento ko ngayon. <laughs> I had a student, yung nga lang, di ko alam kung nasabi ko na, nakwento ko niya sa inyo si Jay, si Jay, yung pagkasinabi kong, Jay, sit down. Abay, ang sama ng tingin sa'yo, ganun, yun. Yung parang gusto kang patayin. <laughs> parang ikaw pa yung may kasalanan. Pero napansin ko si Jay, abay may leadership qualities. Kahit hindi siya school officer, pag nagsalita siya sa harap ng klase, nakikinig yung mga classmates niya. Yan. Nakwento ko ba kahapon? Yes? No? Hindi. So, napansin ko, si Jay may leadership quality. Pinakikinggan siya ng classmates niya. Halimbawa, pag sinabi kong, Hey class, bring newspaper tomorrow. Sir Marco, you remember? School paper drive, newspaper drive. Walang magdadala. Pero pagka si Jay, third year high school, class advisory ko. First class advisory I ever handled. Pag si Jay pumunta sa harap ng class, Hey guys, tomorrow newspaper. Sa bugbugin ko kayo pag wala kayong dala. <laughs> Nagdadala lahat. Nananalo kami. <laughs> Third year B. Ayan. So one day I decided to do something strange. I called him, JJ, J, J, come here. You know, I decided to put up a club and I will call it Organization for Student Empowerment. Ose. Ayan. Ikaw ang gagawin kong president. The, this is what you do. Diba, you have, um, you have a house in Tagaytay, diba? Sabi mo sa tatay mo, pahiram ng bahay niyo sa Tagaytay. Tapos pili ka ng limang best friends mo sa klase, five guys that you can work with. It's an all-boys school. And then, um, punta tayo sa bahay niyo sa Tagaytay this Friday, Saturday. I'll give a seminar on leadership. I'll give a talk on uh, uh, yung uh, strategic planning. Ayan, mag tayo, SWOT analysis. Yung such a waste of time. Tapos uh, gagawa, tayo, gagawa tayo ng plans for the whole year. Activities. Yan. Tapos sabihin mo sa tatay mo, pahiram na rin ang van. Ayan. Tapos sabihin mo sa tatay mo, bahay nyo naman yun. So siya na rin magbigyan ng pagkain. So, and that's what we did. We did that. We went to their house in Tagaytay, spent overnight. I gave a talk on leadership, project management. And because of that, we were the first ones, Ose, to ever organize, the first ever in Southridge, uh, medical mission for the janitors, security guards, maintenance men, and their families. We were the first ones to organize a Christmas party for the Sitio Santo Nino children. We went on to organize a visit to the orphanage, visit to the uh, National Children's Hospital, where you have so many kids so young and dying. And I'm glad I did not give up on Jay, even if it was very easy to give up on somebody like that who can get into your nerves. Yeah, you know how it is? Teachers, na experience nyo to. Pasok kayo ng classroom, and then you look around, I absent si Jay. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Yung, gan <laughs> yung ganon yung tuwan-tuwa kayo. <laughs> it's gonna be a great day today. <laughs> Kasi absent siya. Uh, I'm sure you've had students like that. Aminin mo, wag kang sinungaling. Okay. <laughs> But I'm glad I didn't give up on Jay because Jay would go on to be governor of Quezon Province for three terms and is now on his second term as congressman. 
Here is the message for all of you, dear teachers. In your classroom, this coming new school year, I assure you, there are some people there who are going to be someday very powerful, very influential, and very rich. We will ask them for donation. I mean, it's not bad to ask for donation. <laughs> because that's just the reality of life. That someday they want to give back. I assure you, inside your classroom, there are some people there who may even be someday be the president of the Philippines. How will you teach your class if you know that inside your classroom, this new school year, is the future president of the Philippines? You're not going to say, I have to give more drills, I have to give more exercises. I know what you're going to do. Every chance you can have, you will talk about sincerity, truthfulness, honesty, uprightness, character. You're going to take every possible opportunity to talk about loving the poor, serving the poor, helping the needy. That's how you're going to teach. And so, my dear fellow teachers, Please teach every single class that you have this coming school year like as if you're, pre you're preparing the future president of the Philippines because he, she, just might be there in that classroom. And that's the truth. That's the reality. One more story because I might forget this. This thing about asking for donation. Did I tell you about Mr. Toy Estrera yesterday? One day, I received a text message. Man, please keep in your prayers. Mr. Estrera, our Latin teacher in South Ridge 20 plus years ago, who's been in and out of the hospital, very sick, and is bankrupt. That was a message I received. Did I tell you this story yesterday? I'm getting confused because... I gave another talk in the morning in Siena, and I think that's where I told it, not here. So, I posted it in my Facebook page because I was connected with many graduates of South Ridge who are all over the world. Sabi ko don, hey guys, please include in your prayers Mr. Estrera, who's been in and out of the hospital, very sick, and is in need of financial help. That's what I posted. Right away, messages from all over the world. Uh, David Zaraga, graduate 94, uh, based in Canada, uh, message, Ma uh, Man, thank you for the information. Please let him know that we are keeping him in our prayers. Another message from um, somebody saying, Thanks for the info, man. Would you have his phone number? I'd like to give him a call. Another message saying, thanks for the info. Would you have his address? I'd like to organize a mini batch reunion in his house. So many words of affection and love and concern and care. Somebody even saying, would you have a bank account? I can transfer something a little. I can pass on to Mr. Estrada. And I think we reacted that way because we remembered him as somebody really good, human being, professional, who did not shout, scream, or yell at us. He was a good teacher. It's worthwhile being good teachers. Because someday, we just might need the help of these people. And that's not being selfish. It's just the reality of life. Now, the best message came from Dr. Chestnut Heredia. I think batch, nine, uh, batch 87. Who... Uh, married a woman who owns a hospital and this is his message thanks for the info man I will take care of everything and that's what he did he's an ophthalmologist he operated on the left eye cataract gave him all the medicines he needed operated after a few weeks on the other eye gave him all the medicines he needed he brought him to the hospital of his wife for MRI, CT scan, x-ray all the medical attention he needed everything was attended to all because we remembered Mr. Estrada as somebody who really thought well and took care of us 
it's worthwhile being the best teachers we can be because someday we just might need to rely on the kindness of these students you have inside your classroom. By the way, the moral lesson of the story is marry someone who owns a hospital. <laughs> you will never have any problems with medicines. I want to welcome you to my classroom. Let's talk about some things I learned along the way when I was in Southridge with Sir Marco there in the higher years. I was um, advisor of grade 5, the 5B best bets class. <laughs> we were breaking records on uh, PQFs. And even if, even if I was already principal of intermediate school, vice principal of high school, I insisted on being class advisor because I see, I saw, I continue to see the power of the class advisors in making an impact in the lives of the students and really making a big difference in the lives of the students. So I'd like to welcome you to my classroom, grade 5B. And uh, for many years, that was my class. And now I'd like to talk about a little strategy I have. If you see there, those are name tags. The name of each of the students printed on one side and at the back is plain white and all the names hanging there. On day one, I announced to the class, class, every time you contribute to class unity, class prestige, class honor, I'm going to put a tag, which is just a small colored sticker at the back of your name, okay? Every time you contribute to class unity, class prestige, class honor, I'm going to put a tag. For example, as I announced, the following made it to the varsity team basketball, therefore contributing to class prestige, class honor. As I announced the name, I put a sticker at the back of each of the students that I announced. Because by the end of the quarter, students with the biggest number of tags will receive a certificate, students of the quarter. By the end of the school year, the student with the biggest number of tags, meaning to say has been the most uh, number of times commended for contributing to class unity, class prestige, class honor, will receive a certificate saying student of the year of 5B best bets. Now, for example, I will tell them, okay class, on the first week after the school opening, we are going to Enchanted Kingdom. If you come, then you're going to receive a tag because you're contributing to class unity. And chances are, the first Saturday of the first week of the school year, the whole class will want to join Enchanted Kingdom. Monday, we come back to the classroom, and I will say the following were in the uh, Enchanted Kingdom uh, team building activity of the class. Therefore, they, got, they get a tag. And as I put the tags, it takes time because there are 25 or so of them in the class. The clapping turns into cheering. The cheering turns into a celebration. You have a class that is creating a culture of here in the class, we celebrate class unity, class prestige, class honor. We celebrate achievements. We celebrate each other. Anything that they do to contribute to those things, they get a tag. That's why I tell them, okay class, parents, quarterly forum. We require our parents to come four times a year, three times to attend talks, once for father and son activity. If your parents come, five tags for you. One month bago mag PQF. The kids are already nagging their parents. Mom, Dad, kailangan mag-attend kayo ah. Kailangan ko yung tag. Kahit mag-pirma lang kayo sa attendance, tapos uwi na kayo. And then, they convince their parents to come because they want the tag. Because they want. Now, what are, what are we expecting them to do in school? To study. And therefore, that's the biggest number of tags. First honor, 10 tags. Second honor, five tags for you, or seven tags. And third honor, we call it principal's list, five tags. 
And as I put the names, as I call out the names, the following are uh, principles list. It takes time to put the tags, the sticker, five on each of the names. The clapping turns into cheering. The cheering turns into a whole class celebrating. I love a class where they celebrate each other's achievements. I love a class where they are trying to outdo each other in contributing to class unity, to class prestige, to class honor. So that's the name tag system. It's a recognition system. It's a merit kind of system. But most especially, it's to create a culture where we celebrate each other. We're happy for the achievements of each other. That's the principle of the name tags. Now, I told you yesterday I'm going to talk about how I do my fa uh, day one, first day of the school year. And you are supposed to be preparing for that. I already told you yesterday, do not ever discuss on day one how to get the thing suspended, expelled, and dropped from the rolls. If that was in the original plan, you still have time to remove it. And move it to the fourth day, the fifth day, or even the second week. Because you are not going to foster the lowest level of moral development. Sabi ng research, on day one, whether your college, elementary, kinder, three things are on top of the mind of every student on day one. This is science. I mean, this is research. I didn't invent this. Three things are on top of the mind of every student. Number one, am I in the right classroom? Kala nyo, napaka-profound, napaka-simple, di ba? E, totoo naman, di ba? On day one, you really want to make sure you're in the right classroom. Number two, can I sit anywhere? And number three, the third question on top of the mind of every student on day one, who are you as a teacher? I mean, what kind of teacher are you? Will you be like those favorite teachers of mine who took care of us in the past, who really showed affection? Or are you going to be like those terror teachers who made us not want to come to school? Who made us afraid of being in the classroom? Who are you as a teacher? Research says those are the three things on top of the mind of every student. Now, I answered the question even before they entered the classroom because here's something I do. One week before the opening of the school year, one week, Bago magbukas ang school year, I would go to the registrar's office and I'm going to ask the registrar, this is my class advisory. Can I have the email addresses of the parents in my class? Welcome to the 21st century. Email addresses is as normal, as ordinary, as now having a cell phone and as um, having a... I mean, it's the most normal thing. So I go to the principal's office, at uh, the registrar's office, ask for the email address of the um, students, the parents of my students, and then I email the parents three paragraphs. Paragraph number one, I tell the parents who I am. I tell them I have an MA in creative writing. I have a PhD in literature. I've been teaching for many years. I even founded a school in Iloilo. I am an expert. Let's work together. Trust me. Now, that's very important because when you go to a doctor's office, what do you see in the waiting room of the doctor's office? Diplomas, certificates, plaques of appreciation that he was guest speaker. The doctors want to assure you, thank you for coming to my office. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. When you go to a dentist's office, what do you see? At the waiting room, diplomas, certificates, recognitions, awards. The dentist is like telling you, I know what I'm doing, trust me. When you go to a lawyer's office, what do you see? The same, you will see diplomas, certificates, plaques of appreciation. When you go to the classroom, you're not going to see the diplomas. Who's telling you, who's saying you shouldn't dis display your diploma? I mean, go ahead, display your diploma to your students. Tell them, I'm a graduate, I have a degree, I'm successful, trust me. Let's work together. Now, I don't need to display my diploma. 
I send an email to the parents one week before the opening of the school year and I tell them my credentials. It's my way of saying, I'm an expert. Trust me. Let's work together. Paragraph number two, I tell the parents how to contact me, even the best time of the day that they can call me up. I even give them my cell number. Now, I am not telling you to do this because I know some teachers don't like the idea. I'm not telling you give your cell phone to your parents. You don't have to. But I'm telling you, this is what I did and it has greatly served me well. I mean, it has really helped me a lot. So that when parents have a complaint about the school, they know how to contact me. They will talk to me. They are not going to talk to their neighbor, kapamilya, kapatid, at sa mga kamag-anak. Ganun ang parents, di ba? Pag may reklamo sila, they will talk to the whole barangay who cannot even do anything about it. Not my parents. They know my cell number. They will contact me. And because I gave them my cell number, then they're very open to giving their contact details to me. Communication is one of the most important, crucial elements if we are to engage the parents and the community. Paragraph number three, I tell the parents, by the way, we have a class website. I mean, if you're familiar with the Southridge uh, way of doing things, I sometimes, in the beginning, would hear a parent saying, Mr. Entoy, my son is absent. Can I send the yaya to get the materials he missed? So, now I don't have to tell them, no, no, please don't send the yaya. I just have to tell them, go to our website. At 4.30 in the afternoon, you will see there what your son missed, if there is even a handout that has been distributed, and if there is an exam coming up, and whatever he has to prepare for. And please, don't be afraid of making websites. If you are afraid of that, give it to your grade 3 student. They know how to make websites. <laughs> I mean, the students are more experts than any of us in making websites. Usually, this is where I also add, by the way, Mr. So-and-so, Mr. and Mrs., on Saturday of the first week of the school year, the class will go to Enchanted Kingdom. If you allow your son to join, please return the reply slip below with his payment. And some parents are so nice and they get impressed by this. Hindi pa nagbubukas yung klase. Here's a teacher reaching out. So sasabihin ng nanay, Honey, padala ka na rin ng bayad para kay Mr. Antoy sa Enchanted Kingdom. Three, four parents do that. Eh di kumita pa ako. Uh, and then, usually the fourth paragraph, I also add there, by the way, on day one, please make sure your son brings with him his PE attire. Because I will spend a lot of time on day one making my class play futsal, basketball, dodgeball, at walang kamatayang water bumps tournament. <laughs> Two hours of playing, and they feel this is going to be a great day. I mean, this is going to be a great year. And I will never have to deal with bullying. I will never have to deal with problems of bullying, like what happens in many other schools. And then they go back to the classroom, we take a bit of recess, and more um, fun games, charades, whatever games to build a team. I've come, I've, um, on day one, I've already uh, created a certain class mindset, class culture, and that's when you also decide on what class name are we going to have? What will be our class motto? What will be our class logo? What will be our class chair? What will be? Okay, now, day one, and you remember your day one, many students are going to come very, very early, way before the bell rings. They enter the classroom and they are going to see on top of their table information sheets that they have to fill up because I want to know as many things about them as I can on day one. In fact, hindi pa nagbubukas ang, uh, hindi pa nagbebel ang ring, uh, nagriring ang bell, <laughs> hindi pa nagumpisa ang school day, they fill this up. I get to know <clears throat> many things about them even before the bell rings. I want to know where do they live? their hobbies, interests, awards received. I even want to know the parents' wedding anniversary because on the wedding anniversary of the parents, as a class, we're going to send 
a card, kahit yung kartolina lang, signed by everyone to greet the parents on their anniversary. And the parents, who usually don't receive greetings on their anniversary, they just greet each other, happy anniversary, hon. <laughs> and they receive our card, and they're so happy. And the wife will say, honey, padala natin ng cake at saka coke ang class. <laughs> We have a lot of cakes and coke the whole year round because parents appreciate it. I mean, who on earth will remember to greet you on your wedding anniversary? I have just started creating a family atmosphere, mindset, culture, mentality. We have created a family. I also, of course, want to know as many things as I can about the parents. About their email address, their work, what, what do they do, or do they, things like that. I want to know, how many are you in the family? Are you the youngest child, the, the middle child, the eldest? And Okay, so, three things on top of the mind of every student. And I already answer question number one. Am I in the right classroom? Uh, you should know. I emailed your parents. Hi, sorry. I emailed your parents and I told them that I'll be your class advisor. So, what about uh, some parents who didn't get to put the email addresses? Because it can happen, di ba? Some parents enroll late. They weren't able to put in their email address. So, paano yun? Well, no problem. It's okay. The class list is here. Let's check. Uy, your name is here. Congratulations. You are in the best class in the universe. Come in, come in. Like that, no? Question number two. Can I sit anywhere? Hindi pa sila nakakapasok ng classroom. Sagot ko na yan. I know. You cannot sit anywhere. I have a reserved seat for you. Oh, see? Because it's there. And not only do I have a reserved seat for you, look, I even have an assignment for you. You're in charge of the garbage. Oh, see? Oh, yeah. Don't worry. Next month, iba naman ang job assignment mo. Mag-iiba-iba mag tayo. Your classmates will be in charge of uh, keeping the line orderly, the library, the decor. Yan. Hindi pa nakakapasok ng classroom, maliwanag na ang mensahe. Can I sit anywhere? No. I have a reserved seat for you. And more than that, you have an assignment. Here inside our classroom, we're going to work as a team. Everyone has a role to play. Everyone will contribute to the success of the class. Hindi pa nag-uumpisa ang school year, hindi pa nakakapasok ng classroom, maliwanag na ang mensahe. Here, we're going to work as a team. Everyone is important. And that's very important, by the way. Number three. Question number three. Who are you as a teacher? I answer the question because I follow the advice of Dr. Harry K. Wong, the number one guru in classroom management. And we're going to talk about some of his strategies um, in the later part of this afternoon session. I follow his advice that on day one, I stand by the door. No one can enter except through me. Ayan, sounds familiar. <laughs> Way before the bell would ring, I would be standing by the door because I want to welcome my students with my biggest, widest, fakest smile. And some of them I recognize, so I approach, congratulations, you know, I've been waiting for you for many years. You are very lucky to be in this class. Come in, come in. This is going to be your most spectacular year. Congratulations. I tell them all those lies. <laughs> and they believe the lie. These grade 5 kids are going to go home that afternoon telling their parents, Mom, Dad, Thank you so much. I am in the best class in the world. I mean, they're going to believe the lie. Okay, let me correct myself. Not that they're going to believe the lie. They're going to make it happen. They're going to make it happen. Now, I don't know if I got to mention it here yesterday, but, but I need to say it now. Teachers, 
our students on day one should go home excitedly telling their parents that we are in the best school. We all have to be in a marketing mode right now, making sure that we do not lose any student that we have to another school. And we can only do that if our students will see the teachers, every single teacher that they will have, welcoming them with the biggest, widest, fakest smile. Okay, never mind the fakest, but welcoming them with real open arms. That's why I always say day one of the school year should be one big celebration. The students should be excited to come back home. This is second home. This has got to be a second home for them. And they should be happy here, not anywhere else. We want them to be with us up to the time that they finish studying. So those are the three questions on top of the mind of every student. And I answer all the three questions even before they come inside the classroom. On my last year in 2009 in Southridge, nobody wanted to take grade 7D. So sabi ko, sige, I'll take that. Kaya naging 7D daring darters ang pangalan namin. And then the year after that, I had to move to the University of Asia and the Pacific. Okay, now, when I was a teacher there, there was something I had, like at the back of my mind, it was an agenda. I mean, it was not something public. I was telling everyone. But I had a campaign, an advocacy that I was championing. Anything to get the students away from the computer games. Because I've seen through the years, I've seen how addiction to computer games has been damaging the attentiveness, ability to focus, ability to concentrate of the students. I mean, throughout these years, I've seen how it has been doing them a great deal of damage. Especially those games where the more you kill, the more points you get, the higher level you go, like that, you know? And they get addicted to it. So I would organize for my class anything but computer games, anything to take them away from the computer. I would write a letter to the parents. Parents, on Saturday, the class will spend the afternoon in fully booked in BGC. We were able to get 15% discount for our purchases because the owner is a Southridge graduate. That is time better spent than playing computer games on a Saturday afternoon or going to a, uh, we would go to a visit an orphanage on a Saturday morning. We would go to um, do overnight camp out, sleep over. At 6 o'clock, the uh, Friday of 6 o'clock, the students would come back to school. We would put all the chairs in the classroom on the sides and mattresses all over the, in the middle. And then I'm going to show them a very, very scary movie at 6 o'clock. So scary, they do not want to go out of the classroom anymore. No. <laughs> because 6 to 8, we will be watching a scary movie while waiting for the McDonald's dinner to, to be delivered. And then we would have dinner at around 8 o'clock. And then from 9 to 12 midnight, there would be futsal, basketball, water bombs tournament, dodgeball. That's far better than spending the whole Friday night killing time in front of the computer playing computer games. It works. I mean, it works. Those are the things they will remember. When I meet my former 5B Best Bets students, and some of them are so nice, so great, I was invited to the wedding of two of them already. That's what they remember. They don't remember the classes. <laughs> they don't remember the subject-verb agreement I taught them. They remember the times we spent outside of the school. And yes, you can have three or four enchanted kingdom in a year. Admittedly expensive, but that's far better than killing the whole Saturday, killing time the whole Saturday, playing computer games, anything but computer games. And my class would have all sorts of celebrations. I usually would just have to text three dads 
three fathers, I would tell them, the class will celebrate because we were champions in the Sabayang Bigkasan. We were champions in the Math Quiz B. And the three dads would text other parents, Ako nang bahala sa pizza, ikaw magdala ng ganito. It has never been difficult to get parents to help us celebrate. And there was many, there were many celebrations throughout the year because the class has created more than just a class. It had become a family. Now, some of you are thinking, Mr. Antoy, dagdag trabaho yan. Yung Saturday, Saturday na yan. Wala namang dagdag sweldo yan. Hindi naman overtime pay yan. Walang overtime pay. So, the question is, do we really have to go that extent? Does it work? Well, to answer, to answer the questions, to answer the question, I want to show you some of the websites of the class of those years. Remember, I told you we would have a website. And by the way, it's not an added job because students would be the ones to update it. By dismissal time, they would just show me a piece of paper saying, Sir, this is what we're going to put in the class website. A reminder about an upcoming exam. And then I would just tell them, ah, dagdag nyo yung ano, reminder about PQF, the Parents' Quarterly Forum. Or dagdag mo, reminder about gala attire this coming Friday. So, the students are the ones who will update the website. And, and so I'll show you. To answer the question, does it work? This one, for example, was the very last website I've had with my last class. And it will look like this. You know, when a parent texts, Mr. Antoy, when is graduation again? Ah, ma'am, check the school calendar. It, it's in our class website. I, that made my life so easy. Uh, Mr. Antoy, when is again summer break? Uh, it's there. Check the school calendar in our website. So, let's answer, answer the question. Does it work? Here are some pages from the 5B Best Bets class. We would always get 100% attendance for PQF, which is not a normal thing. I mean, it's not usual that a class, every single student will have parents coming over to attend the talk. 100% normally in the first one. In the second one, uh, some other, the other classes would be averaging 50, 60%. Not mine, we would still be 86%, 90%. Which means in a class of 25, only two or three parents are not able to come to represent their kids. I never had problems with my parents coming over for the PQF year after year. And then, 86% of our students are in the honors list. Ibig sabihin, in a class of 25, only three do not make it to first honor, second honor, or third honor, principal's list. And it's not because we lower the standards. It's because every single one is eager to have the tags on their plate, on their names. You remember what we saw earlier? Everyone is excited to contribute to class unity, class prestige, class honor. We were doing it as a team. So, answer the question, does it work? Well, the website seems to say, it works. I mean, to get everyone always 100% of the time, 100% in gala attire when they're required to be in gala attire, that's something. Another year, another batch, another group of students, but the same culture, the same mindset, the same, the same spirit, the same family atmosphere. This is amazing. Congratulations, we did it again. Of the nine finalists in the Book Fair Essay Writing Contest, nine are from our class. <laughs> they are going to be driven to succeed, to be successful, to achieve. Does it work? I think it's very clear. Cleanest classroom recognition. Search for class excellence award. Do you remember we talked about it yesterday, the class excellence system? And we would always be 
many times, the highest pointer in intermediate school. Given, being given recognition for the Hospital ng Bundilupa Outreach, the Enchanted Kingdom trip, 80% attendance of PQF for the second one. Okay, now, of course, you're not from Southridge, maybe Marco is, and he might recognize some of the names. And when you are from Southridge and you see names like this, you're going to say, Uy, nag second honor? Eh, di ba last year, muntik ma kick out yan because Bidori, boys in danger of repeating the year. But not when he is in our class. He's going to try to achieve. Or you look at the list, and some teachers from Southridge will recognize, Oh, Talaga, nag-honor student yan. Eh, di ba disciplinary problem yan? Uh, not in our class. He was very cooperative. He was driven to succeed. He wanted to be the best bets. I mean, he was in the best bets. So, the answer is, yeah, it works. It works. Year after year, same similar figures, numbers would appear. In a class of 25, 22 would most likely make it to the honors list. Not because we lower the standards, but because all of them are driven to achieve, to do well. Okay, so we can leave this because now. I have a lot of memories. Um, okay, a video to rest and for some because they need to go to the washroom. Hindi pa kayo washroom. Sigur, ingi-ingi-ingi kayo. Hindi kayo makarest. Kasi you don't want to miss. Now you can miss this video. It's just to move us, to make us realize, oo nga, let us believe in these students. Let us not give up on any one of them. No one is a problem student. They may be just trying to discover what they are really going to be good at. Okay, before we go to fourth part, the strategies of Harry Wong, just a few questions I, we can answer. Um, when you were starting, what you are already expert in, what were your challenges, and how did you overcome them? Sabi ng research, one of the things, one of the main reasons that many teachers leave the profession is failure in classroom management. And that's one of the toughest things. How to get John to do what you want John to do without ever having to resort to shouting, screaming, and yelling. If you are not taught classroom management, and I didn't learn classroom management in the beginning, you will resort to shouting, getting angry, getting upset. Some teachers reach that point where they can the only way they can get a student to do what they want them to do is by showing them that they are already upset, angry. But thank goodness, one day I received a pasalubong from a guest from the U.S., a cassette tape entitled, Once and for All, You Can Solve That Discipline Problem by Dr. Harry K. Wong. And I'm going to share some of his ideas with you. But yes, in the beginning, that was a challenge for me. Even breaking one of my rules, which is never to use profanity and bad words, because sometimes a teacher can reach a point where he thinks, she thinks, bad words are justified in order to discipline John. It's never justified. <clears throat> there are ways of getting John to do what you want him to do, by simply following Harry Wong's procedures and routines. We'll get into the other questions later on. Teachers, sabi ng research, the number one factor governing learning is classroom management. It is not discipline. It is not discipline. It is not um, self-esteem. It's not motivation. It's not uh, class size. It's the ability of the teacher to manage the class. That's when learning will happen. Now, principle we will have to follow is Harry Wong. Sabi ni Harry Wong, stop disciplining and start managing. Those are two different things. They're not the same. In fact, he would say, you don't need discipline. You do not need discipline 
if you know how to manage. Now, let's differentiate. Stewardesses manage. They don't discipline. How do stewardesses manage the airplane? Here's what happens in every airline. Before takeoff, they review the procedures. Remember, these are not rules. These are procedures. What they expect people to do. Diba? And here's another principle. I mean, here's another reality. Kahit anong airline ang pasukin mo, pare-pareho ang procedures. Open the window shade, close the table in front of you, straighten up the chair, fasten your seat belt. Kahit anong eroplano, follow the same procedures. And that's a problem when students start saying, Bakit sa classroom ni Mrs. Ano, pwede kaming lumipat ng upuan? Bakit dito hindi? Bakit dun sa case, sir, pwedeng kumain? Dito hindi. You will have problems when classrooms have different procedures and students get confused. So, before you open the school year, one of the most important things teachers need to do, let's sit down and make our procedures uniform so that students, kahit anong classroom ang pasukin nila, they are very clear what is expected of them. I mean, you will never hear a passenger in, our, in an airplane, Bakit sa Philippine Airlines, pwede namang lumipat ng upo? Hindi, pare-pareho yan. You cannot even move to another chair because the, you are assigned a specific chair. Everyone has a specific seat. To, so, Make all your procedures uniform so that students can enter any classroom and he knows exactly what is expected of him. That's one. Now, what happens next after reviewing the procedures? The stewardesses manage. They don't discipline. So this is what they do. They go around making sure everybody follows the procedures. How do they do that? Two things lang. Two things. They call you, ma'am, sir, the window, please. Thank you. Uh, sir, uh, the seat belt, please. Thank you. Ma'am, paki sarado na yung lamesa. Two things lang, ma'am or sir, and they tell you exactly what they want you to do. That's managing. They don't discipline. Here is what stewardesses will do if they discipline. They don't manage. And think about the teachers who discipline, they don't manage. Sir, yung bintana, hindi mo nadinig yung announcement, kailangang ulitin ko pa sa'yo. Pare, pareho kayo ng anak mo, magkamukha na kayo, pagbuol-buoling ko kayo dyan. Sir, yung seatbelt, anong gusto mong gawin ko? May sakit ka ba? Bakit hindi? Di ba ganyan yung teachers minsan? Ang daming sinasabing useless words. How many times do they have to tell you? Ganyan, ano? John, Joey, kanina pa kayong dalawa dyan, pag umpugin ko kayo, para kayong mga, di ba? Useless. That's disciplining. You are not managing, you're disciplining. Stop disciplining and start managing. That's a principle of Harry Wong. So therefore, if you're a classroom manager, no useless words, don't discipline, don't get angry, don't get upset. Two things lang. John, please be seated. Thank you. Joanna, stop talking. Thank you. Joey, sit up straight. Thank you. But, here's a great thing. I will teach you later strategies where you don't even need to say, John, sit up straight. Joanna, stop talking. Jay, look at the board. Ice here now. You will ne never even have to say those things. And there's a way of doing it. We'll get into those strategies. So, you get my point? Management is not the same as disciplining. Stop disciplining and start managing. You don't need discipline if you know how to manage. And how do you manage? Procedures and routines. Clearly define procedures and routines. We'll define procedures and routines later on. Because research says Oh, 
Of course, you want responsible students. Number one, the only way you can have responsible students is if you have procedures and routines which the students can be responsible to. Teachers, take note. When you have procedures and routines, you are making the students responsible to the procedures and routines, not to you. Not to you. So if they break the procedure, if they don't follow the procedure, they're not taking it against you. They are taking it against the procedure. So please, never ever say like what some teachers in other schools do. John, stop talking. Kanina ka pa. Are you challenging my authority? Ayan, di ba? Yung ganyang line. Are you challenging my authority? No, no, no. He, John is not challenging your authority. He is just not being responsible to the procedure. But the question is, do you have a procedure? Eh, kaya naman pala. John does not know what to do, what to follow. Kasi hindi mo binigyan ng procedure. That's what research says. Number two, when students know how the class is run, believe me, they will more willingly do whatever you want them to do. They will. Ang problema, did you teach the procedure? Now, many schools, they have procedures, but they don't rehearse them. And that's the keynote from Dr. Harry Wong. Don't just teach procedures. Rehearse them over and over and over again until they become routines. That the students do things automatically. Now, this is very crucial. As I said, many teachers left the profession kasi kinain sila ng buong-buo ng kanilang mga estudyante. Have you heard of that expression? Kinain ng buong-buo. They lost control of the class. They lost their mind. I mean, the, the nakakasira ng utak. If you come inside the classroom and people are jumping up and down, and you need to say, stop talking, keep quiet, uh, um, sit down, sit up straight, eyes here on the board. And what do inefficient and ineffective teachers do when they lose control? They walk out. Ayan. And you hear of teachers walking out. Kasi napakaraming k-drama na pinanood. Kaya tuloy pati sila, kailangan puro drama. Hindi... And the students will not start behaving simply because nag-walk out ka. They, in fact, some students are testing. Kailan kaya natin mapapaiyak si ma'am? <laughs> I mean, there are students who are like that. Okay, so, let's differentiate procedures, what you want students to do. And you make them do them always, over and over, until they become routines automatic now please take note remember procedures are not rules like in the airline open the window shade close the, the table in front of you straight up that's not, those are not rules they are simply procedures what you expect people to follow and you rehearse them over and over when an expert uh, flight uh, someone who flies a lot goes to a plane, you don't need to remind the, the person. He knows exactly. Open the window shade, and straighten up the chair, etc. But as I said, the problem is we do not rehearse them until they become automatic. The number one problem in the classroom is not discipline. It's the lack of procedures and routines. And you can have as many procedures as you want, even hundreds if you want, for as long as you do not just teach the students the procedures, you rehearse them over and over until they become automatic. Okay? They are not rules. Sabi ko kahapon, rules are different. They're almost like a dare. I dare you break my rules, there will be consequence. Ito, this is how we do things here inside the classroom. Some procedures, but by the way, the title of the book of Harry Wong is The First Days of School. Kasi teachers should spend a lot of time rehearsing, learning and rehearsing the procedures in the first days of school. 
Even the first five days, sabi ni Harry Wong, wala kang ginawa kundi magturo at magrehearse ng procedures. After those five days, the whole, the rest of the year will be clockwork. The students know exactly what they want to, what you want them to do. Some procedures you will teach towards the end of the year. For example, the procedure in receiving your diploma, shaking the hand of the principal, going to the middle of the stage and bowing. Graduation procedure. That's not rule. Those are not rules. They are procedures. And you remember, we rehearse them over and over until it becomes routine for the students. They know exactly what they will do during graduation day. The same. What is your procedure if you want students to recite? Do you want them to raise their hand? Do you want them to wait to be called? Do you want them to stand by their desk? What is it? Rehearse it. Teach it and then rehearse it. Kung wala kang procedure nun, you know what happens. The students will shout the answer from their chair. They, will, they don't care about raising hand, waiting to be called. Why? Because you did not teach them the procedure. Okay? So, that's an example of the procedures. Look at this. Here are some samples of procedures you should have better if they are uniform. Whatever classroom pasukin ng studyante, the same procedures are expected of them. For example, passing in of papers. Ineffective teachers do not have procedures. They just, follow, they just say what they have been hearing ever since they were young. Okay, class, time's up. Pass the papers forward. Which Harry Wong said is the worst way to pass in papers. Let's say these are rows of students. And students are not angels. Hindi sila pagsabi mong, okay, class, stop writing. Exam, ano? Stop writing, pass the papers forward. Do you think all students will really put down their pen and then pass the paper forward? Of course not. Some of them will continue writing and will not stop until you say, paper's not in, I will not collect anymore. Ayan, ganyan, di ba? <laughs> galit na galit na, di ba? And that's the only way mag mag magmamadali, magpasa. Tapos yung iba, tatayo para magbigay. And you have a room. Of course, the people at the back, they want to pass ahead kasi sila ang pinakamalayo. Eh, yung nasa harap niya, nags nagsusulat pa. So, what does the guy do? Kailangang hampasin niya ng papel. Uy, pasa na raw. Yung nasa harap, sasabihin niya, ano ba, hindi pa ako tapos. And you have the class erupting into a chaos simply because you said, pass the papers forward. It's the worst way of collecting papers. Here is an example of a procedure, good procedure to pass in papers. Let's say these are rows. And here's what I will say. Okay, class? We rehearse this over and over until it becomes a routine. Okay, class? Time's up. At the count of five. You see, I value time. I put a lot of importance to time. At the count of five, at the count of five all papers to the aisle. And then I start counting. Five. Four, you see, I don't count one, two, three, four, five, kasi pwedeng six, seven, eight, nine, ten yun. Ito, five, four, three, two, one, talagang zero ang bagsak mo. And when I say five, we rehearse this. When I say five, the people at the end rows know that they should be already passing the paper to the right person. And the person here, within peripheral vision niya, hindi niya na kaya, kailangang hampasin. Kita siya na nagsasubmit ng papel yung nasa tabi niya. So, the people at the end rows know. Kasi sabi ko, at the count of five, all papers at the aisle. Okay. Five, four, those people in the second row know. That four means they should already be passing the papers to the next beside them, going to the aisle. Three, two, and one. By the time I reach one, all the papers are already in the aisles. I just have to walk down the aisle. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Some people, some teachers would rather die than say, thank you very much. Thank you. Very <laughs> These are teachers who reach the point where the only way they can make the students do what they want them to do is by getting angry, getting upset. Even thank you very much becomes alien to their system. Have you met teachers like that? 
the other teachers were like that. Para bang ikinahihiyana nilang mag thank you very much kasi lagi lang silang sumisigaw, nagagalit, at saka para bang consumption lang ang mga sudyante sa buhay. Parang ganun ang... Okay, that's one strategy of passing in papers. Here's another sample, uh, heading of papers. Magbubukas ang klase ng August. By September, dapat wala nang nagtatanong, Sir, do we need to write our full name? Sir, do we need to put the date? Sir, do we need to... Because on the first day of the school year, dapat, and better yet, every classroom they enter, the procedure is the same. I want the names there, the date here, the subject. Okay? That should be how we had every paper. One fourth, one half, one whole, test papers. And then, in my case, you can have your own system, but in my case, I want my students to write their nickname and family name. Kasi ayaw kong um, uh, Yasinta Batong Bakal. Hindi naman yung Yasinta ang tawag. Uh, synth. Ayan. Synth Batong Bakal. When I return the test papers, I want to be able to call them by their nicknames. Not by the uh, Euphrasio Eustachio. Hindi. Uh, I want to... France, ayan. France, you stuck you. So I always ask my students, write the nickname and family name. And then the date. No need for the subject. I'm the only one who will collect the papers. It will come to... So, but it's up to you. What you want to set as, how do you head the papers? So you see, before the school year opens, it's good for the teachers to sit down. Let's make it uniform. Para kahit anong classroom, ang pasokin ng mga bata, Heading of papers, passing in of papers, pare -pare it becomes real routine. Now, they, these are procedures. This is just how we do things here in our school. These are not rules. Now, here's another one. When teacher is tardy, most schools do not have a procedure. When the bell rings and there's no teacher inside the classroom, I have a procedure. Class, here's the procedure. If the bell rings, there's no teacher. There's no teacher in the classroom. President, vice president, you take over the class. Secretary, you will go to the office and ask, is Mr. So-and-so here? We don't have a teacher in the classroom. Who's going to substitute? So that the bell rings, there's no teacher, no problem. It's not going to become a zoo with the students jumping up and down like chimpanzees and monkeys. No. The president and the vice president will put order in the class. It works. It works. Now, more procedures. Here are some very important uh, procedures you should teach students. Coming to attention. Coming to attention. When you need to make an announcement and you want the students to keep quiet, you enter the classroom, katatapos lang ng PE, and the classroom is messy, everyone is excited kasi nanalo sa game, may medyas sa sahig, may brief, anong ginagawa ng brief doon? <laughs> but you need to announce something. An inefficient teacher will have to shout to be heard. Right? Kung hindi pa rin siya madinig, hahampasin yung blackboard. Kung hindi pa rin madinig, ay papatay-patayin yung ilaw para mapansin ng mga sudyante <laughs> flickering the lights. Because you do not have procedures that you taught the class and that you rehearsed over and over until it has become a routine. Here is a very good procedure that works. Class. Day one, every time I need to get your attention, I am going to stand by the middle of the room and calmly raise my hand. When I do that, it means salami. Stop and look at me. Salami. Okay? Let's rehearse it. Get a partner, talk about what you did last summer, and then wait until I tell you, I give you the procedure of salami okay go and then they start talking when the noise level is very very high you go to the middle of the room and you calmly raise your hand in a matter of three four seconds 
you will have the whole class keeping quiet and you didn't shout, scream, yell, slammed your hand on the, on the whiteboard, you didn't look crazy flickering the lights. You just calmly raise your hand. It works. It works. Because one day, I was invited to give a talk to 2,000 students of 27 St. Paul school system all over the country. They all gathered in St. Paul, Pasig, and I was asked to give them a one-week seminar on journalism. And the first day of the assembly, 2,000 students coming from all over the Philippines, they were excited, they were talking loudly, boisterously laughing, and suddenly, in the middle of that noise, Sister Teresing, I'm trying to remember her name, Sister Teresa, went to the middle of the stage and calmly raised her hand. Three seconds, four seconds, and the whole auditorium kept quiet because they knew the procedure. Salami. It works, especially if you rehearse it over and over until it becomes a routine, automatic. So, you calmly raise your hand. Rehearsal to eh. Day one, I told them to get a partner, talk about what you did last summer, and then in the middle of that very loud noise, I go to the middle, Chances are, John, my favorite student, will not stop talking. <laughs> Don't get mad. Don't get angry. Don't say what teachers say. John, are you challenging my authority? No. You do what the stewardesses do. John, what's the procedure, please? He will stop talking. Thank you. Let's try it again, class. This time, get another partner. Talk about what you did last summer. I'll give you time. Go. And they start talking. And when the noise level is very high, again, I go to the middle of the room and calmly raise my hand. Very good. It took you five seconds. Next time around, let's go for three seconds. Salami, stop and look at me. Okay? And then we rehearse it again later on until it becomes automatic. The next time around, you need to get the attention of the students. We are not going to insult any student, you're not going to get angry, you're not going to get upset, you just calmly raise your hand. Now, sometimes I ask my students to get a partner, discuss the question, you can sit anywhere in the classroom. Salami might not work because some students are seated there at the back. They don't see me. Kahit anong ganda ng pag uh, calmly raising my hand there, hindi nila makikita. So I would have the bell method. Class, here's the procedure. If I ring the bell, ting, I will count three, two, and one. By the time I reach one, I need you to stop talking, even if you're in the middle of a sentence. Look at me. No need to stand up. Just look at me because I need to make an announcement. Let's try it. Go get a partner, etc. So we rehearse it over and over. The next time I ring the bell, it doesn't take three seconds. As soon as they hear the bell, it's automatic. They will keep quiet because you need to make an announcement. You never had to raise your voice. You never have to get angry. You never have to say, John, are you challenging my authority? Simply say, John, what's the procedure, please? Last day of the school year, you ring the bell and John still doesn't stop. John, what's the procedure, please? And then you say, thank you. It works. It works. If right now you're thinking, it's not going to work. Sir, Mr. Antoy, kung kilala mo lang yung estudyante namin, isang estudyante ko galing sa ikalalim lalima ng lupalop ng impyerno, hindi marunong makinig. If you're thinking that way, well, it's not going to work. But if you're thinking, ay oo nga, I have to make it automatic for all of them. It can work. Okay, so, I repeat. You can have as many procedures as you want for as long as you rehearse them over and over until they become routine. That's procedures and routine because it's the procedures that set up the class for achievement to take place. Okay, well, we are down to our last 10 minutes. Let me give you the five myths of discipline. Mr. Antoy, 
wala akong problema with discipline. Here are five myths. Kasi nung alingan, hindi totoo. Myth number one, do not smile until Christmas. You know, we laugh at that, pero nadinig ko. Senior teacher, sinasabihan yung batang teacher, alam mo, wag kang hingiti, dapat matakot ang studyante sa'yo. Takutin mo sila. Kasi pag gumiti ka, the students will try to go as far as they can. They will check how far they can go with you. That's not true. I already told you. I welcome my students with my biggest, widest, fakest smile on day one. Do not be afraid to smile. It's not true that you have to be a terror human being. <laughs> and besides, by the way, do not smile until Christmas works for one week. <laughs> After one week, you will spend the rest of the time with students afraid of you, terrorized of you, thinking of how to get back at you, or avoiding you, or hating the school altogether. <laughs> so it doesn't work. It's, it's not worth it. Here's myth number two. Mr. Lentoy, wala sana akong problema if only I am big and tough. Ano mo, yung katatakutan ako ng mga studyante ko, they will not even think of uh, fooling around. Yan. That's not true. I had teachers who were big, <laughs> overweight, and huge. But they were very motherly. They were fatherly. They were very good teachers, caring, loving. So, that's not true. Here's a third myth. Sir, Mr. Rantoy, wala akong problema with discipline if only I have the latest gadgets. You know, video projector in every classroom, my own laptop. Okay, if you can afford them, go ahead and have them. They are very good, but they are not what will solve discipline problem. I was consultant to an international school. Every room you go to, napakaganda ng 60, 80 inch HD TV. Kakabit mo lang yung laptop mo, but they have problems with bullying. So, that's not what will solve discipline problem. Number four. Mr. Antoy, alam mo, wala akong problema with discipline if only all my students are from the middle class. Kasi ang problema yung nandun sa mga napakayayaman or napapaka, napakahirap na walang self-motivation. That's not true. It doesn't matter their economic background. If you know how to manage them, if you know how to create a class culture, class way of mindset, class unity, now here's number five myth and I especially address myself to young teachers because they are the ones who especially fall prey to the fifth myth. Mr. Rentoy, wala kong problema with discipline kasi magiging barkada ko ang mga estudyante ko. And some young teachers, especially those fresh out of college, ang kala nila, pag naging barkada nila yung high school students, then they will not have problems with discipline. Wrong. In fact, we need to remind teachers, young and old, do not be friends with students. You're not meant to be friends. You're meant to be a role model. You're meant to be someone they will look up to. You're meant to be someone they will consider as their heroes. Role model. Someone they will say, Paglaki ko, gusto ko yun. Kagaya ni ma'am. Kagaya ni sir. Not necessarily teachers, but may integrity, may virtues, may character. I've seen how this tragically ended many times with teachers who tried to be barkada with their friends. We speak the same language. We uh, understand each other. Tapos one day, they need to discipline the class and the students get confused. Teka ba, kala ko ba barkada natin? Kumain nga tayong bakdo, uminom nga tayo nung ano eh, red horse beer nung ano eh, sabado eh. Eh bakit siya nag... They get confused. The students do not need any more friends. Look at their Facebook, and dami na nilang friends. What they need is a role model. And that's what we teachers are. It's a myth that I will not have problems with discipline if only I am friends with them. No, it will not happen that way. Okay, sorry, I will have to skip uh, some parts because we need to, I want to share with you concrete strategies now. Um, okay, sorry about that. Here we go. 
because I'm down to my last eight minutes. Sabi ni Harry Wong, sabi ni Harry Wong, classroom management, dapat daw ang seminar natin ginagawa to sa ballet studio. Because one of the most powerful ways, one of the most powerful strategies you have, you have to look at yourself in the mirror because one of the most powerful tools is what we call stare, the stare. Have you ever wondered how master teachers are able to get the class to keep quiet just by standing in the middle of the room and then everybody starts keeping quiet. Wow, how did you do that? Si Mrs. Batumbakal nag tatambling tambling na hindi pa rin tumatahimik ang mga bata. Master teachers, they go, they keep quiet, and then the class keeps quiet. How, how do you do that? That's what you call the stare. Isang tingin. But the stare, the perfect stare, sabi ni Harry Wong, please try to discover your perfect stare. Kasi hindi natin nakikita yung sarili natin. Ano? I mean, we don't see our face. Hindi mo alam, minsan, yung stare mo, ang mensahe is, hayop kayong mga demonyo kayo, saan kayo galing ng impyer? Yung ganon, yung parang ano, galit na galit. Ano? But there is a kind of stare. There is a kind of stare na you go in the middle of the room and then you look at the students and the stare gives a message of, oh, come on class, I expect best behavior. Oh, come on. Show respect. Without you saying it, the stare says it all. I expect, res I expect you to respect me. Come on. Discover that. Look at yourself in the mirror and look for that perfect stare that you will use every time you want the class to keep quiet, to listen, because you need to say something. That is what we call the stare. I think this will be the last that I will have to cover. I think tomorrow I can cover the others in the three, no, the four best teachers in the world. I've already talked to you about Harry Wong, Hal Urban, Rafe Esquith, Ron Clark. All of them use the check system. Here's how it works. Principle of Harry Wong, do not eat up academic time in order to discipline. Do not stop teaching in order to discipline. Some ineffective teachers, pag galit na galit na sila, they stop lecturing, and the rest of the period, magsasermon. <laughs> Kasi hindi siya handa sa lesson. <laughs> Don't eat up academic time in order to discipline. And here's how the check system works. I explain the system to the students on day one. I only have three rules. Sabi ko kahapon, don't have so many rules that the students cannot even remember them, memorize them. Make sure you only have rules that they can memorize, then they will follow. And I usually only would have three. No unnecessary noise, no unnecessary movement, come prepared for class. Yun lang. No unnecessary noise, no unnecessary movement, come prepared for class. Those are the only three rules I have with my class. Now, here's how the check system works. Let's say I'm giving a class on subject-verb agreement. Class, if the subject is singular, the verb should be singular. If the subject is plural, the verb should be... I noticed John and Joey, <laughs> my favorite students, John and Joey talking. They have chosen to break rule number one, no unnecessary noise. I don't stop teaching. I just calmly pick up the pen, the marker, the chalkboard, the chalk, while looking at John... Uh, John and Jay, and then I go to the board and write their names. John and J uh, Joey, no, because I explained it on day one, that if I write your name on the board, there's no punishment. It's just a warning, because you have chosen to break one of my rules. So it's just a warning, no sanction whatsoever. And then I continue teaching. You see, I didn't stop lecturing. However, there are some subjects that are always singular. Anyone, anybody, anything, someone, somebody. I notice again, John and Joey talking. They again decided to, they have chosen to break rule number one. I don't stop. I don't get angry. I don't call the names of John and Joey. I simply pick up the marker and put a check mark beside their name. And John and Joey know, I explained it on day one, that 
your name written on the board with a check mark means you are going to spend five minutes in detention, in recess, in lunch, dismissal time, whichever is coming up. A second check mark would mean 15 minutes of detention, in recess, in lunch, or dismissal time. A third check mark would mean you have to come back on Saturday for detention. A fourth check mark means I would have to call your parents. They know those things because I explained them in the first days of the school year. I explained exactly what the rules are all about. And I tell you, as soon as I write the names of John and Joey on the board, they are going to be very, very quiet because they wouldn't want a check mark. It works. I managed to get John and Joey to stop talking without even calling their names. I just wrote their names on the board. Or I just put a check mark beside their name. It works. If Harry Wong, Ron Clark, Ray Fesquith, and um, Hal Urban do it, and they're among the best teachers in the world, it must really be, it really must work. Okay. Um, so that's the check system. Unfortunately, we, for today, have run out of time. And I will have to show you. Don't worry, the other strategies we didn't get to cover, I will be covering tomorrow. Because they are um, very, very helpful for you.